It was as if sea and ocean collided as the Pallavetare Arsam Bavarier party approached the gates of the Tanjore fort. The commander of the Chola country, the god of judgment, the heroic warrior who has scored 64 points in 36 battlefields, the great Pallavatare Yar is visiting. Such awards were given to every little king by the cheerleaders. Similarly, Kajum Balar Velar, Thiruko Valar Malay Aman and others were awarded. Murasas and Sungas sounded in between. The castle walls echoed. At the gate of the fort, Sinapati Pariya Velar, Malay Aman, chief minister and others were standing below, so the Pallavatare also had to get down from their respective vehicles. Chinna Pallavatare are thought that the commander and others stood at the gate of the fort in order to make them get down from the vehicles and take them inside the fort. He said the same to others. He asked the commander to leave the responsibility of talking to Koshtiyar to himself. Big Vela and the others anticipated that they might have to spend some time talking to the visitors. So instead of standing at the gate of the fort, they were standing in the field of vines a little further away. When the princes approached them from their vehicles, the general said, Come. 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 You come. 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 May the Chola kingdom and the Chola clan benefit from your arrival. Said. At once the little Pula Vetarea said, Yes, sir. May the Chola kingdom benefit from our arrival. Similarly, may their departure also benefit. Then, the elder Velar's eyes turned red. Sir. It is the custom of the Velar clan of Kajumbalar to go in different directions for the prosperity of the Chola kingdom and for the glory of the Chola clan. The whole world knows that my dear brother Paranthakan little Velan lost his life in the battlefield of Elam. I was also in Elam until a few days ago. Our clan knows the art of driving a horse in a shell pan. Within the walls of the fort. We know the custom of keeping the palace safe and guarding those dungeons and treasure dungeons. If the Chola clan is sure to benefit from your arrival and my departure, then I will not stand here for a moment. Roared the big Velar. I pray to all of you. Don't hurt the heart of the emperor who is in grief for losing his eldest son with your quarrels, he asked. These words stuck in the minds of everyone present. They realized that this was not the time to vent all their personal anger. At once, Chinna Pallavatare R said, Prime Minister. We are ready to act according to the Emperor's will. When will we get the Emperor's Darshan? Can we see it tonight? We want to know the Emperor's will in his own words. Said. Commander. Their wish is a just wish. There is no doubt that it will be fulfilled. But you all know the Emperor's physical and mental condition. As night falls, the emperor's physical and mental agony increases. And before talking to the princes about the right to the title, the emperor wants to have a final word with Sembian Mathavi. He wants to make one last attempt to change his mind. You know for what purpose. Therefore, the emperor will call you all before the end of the day tomorrow. He wants you all to come inside the fort tonight and stay in peace in his palace. He has ordered the great Velar to make provision for those who have no palace inside the fort. Again the petty officer interrupted, Prime Minister. We have no need of comforts. We are trained to live in the open on the battlefields. If the Emperor is going to see us tomorrow, what is the need for us to come inside the fort tonight? Said. What is the need for you to stay outside instead of staying in your palace? Asked the Prime Minister. Commander. Kalan Takakander seems afraid to come and stay in Tanjore Fort. Said the commander. Afraid? What does it look like? Black? Red? Does it have horns? Does it have wings? Perhaps the big farmer who has hurriedly fled from the battlefield of Elam would know, said the small farmer. What what? It seems that these two can't be stopped from bumping into each other. The big predator came forward, shouting hum to fill the sky. Everyone looked at him with great respect. Brother. The Velar of Kajumbalar came from the dynasty of Perivala. The Velar clan has never broken a vow. What is stopping us from entering the fort when the great Velar says that he will protect us? Asked the great reaper. 
brother. We need no other's protection. We need no promises. We have our swords and the swords of thirty thousand soldiers. I am the commander of this fort of Tanjor. I consent to enter the fort unless it is again in my possession," said Kalantagakangdur. Senate Patti Velar looked at Pariya Palyavatarayar and said, Sir. I am willing to do so if the Emperor orders. Said. This man captured Barilla Fort by order of the Emperor. Asked the small gardener. No, I took this castle by the power of the sword. Said Pariya Velar. I will take it back with the power of the sword. Let's test it now. Saying the little reaper, he put his hand on the handle of the knife. The great reaper caught his brother by the hand and said, Brother. This is the time to take up the sword. We are here by the emperor's will. Said. Brother. How can you be sure that he will not take us captive when we enter the fort? How do you convince him who suddenly stormed the fort without expecting the emperor's orders? Asked the small gardener. Trusting him, you left our Pendu children in this fort and left? You left Prince Madhurandaka too. Said the elder. Now I doubt that it was wrong. Even if only Madhurandhagar was harmed, I would wipe out the Kajumbalarg clan and do it again. Cried the small gardener. So far the military commander Buthivikrama Kesari, who had spoken indifferently, is now furious. A major catastrophic collision could have occurred at that location the next moment. Fortunately, at that moment there was some commotion at the fort gate. Everyone's attention went there. A little earlier, Prime Minister Anuradhar had gone to Alwarkadayan who had called him by signal. He told him some secret message. After hearing that, he approached the place where the reapers and the big farmers were standing. On his arrival, the words of Madhurandak Deva, the small gardener, fell into his ears. Commander! What are you worried about Prince Madhuranthagan? No harm will come to him. Just before, Madhuranthagadeva and his mother Sembian Mathavi went out of the fort. They were going to see Santhan Amuthan who was offering flowers to the temple. Kalanthay Kandar interrupted before the chief minister said. Yes, both mother and son came out of the castle. But only the mother went back into the castle. Said the small gardener. Aha! How did you know that? Said the prime minister. Prime minister! Did you think that only you have bad guys? Madhurand Hakativar who came out did not go back inside the fort. I want to know the reason said the small gardener. A smile blossomed on the Prime Minister's face. At the same time, at the gate of the fort, long live Prince Madhurand Hakativar. Long live! There were chants. Everyone looked eagerly in the direction from which the slogans came. On the elephant that was entering the fort gate was seated a Madhurand Hakar wearing a princely crown and other ornaments. Next to the elephant crawled a tusker. Commander! There was some delay in Madhurand Hakativar's return to the fort. Vani Amai's son Santhan Amuthan has fallen from his horse and is badly injured. Sempiyan Madhavi asked him to be brought into the fort on a palanquin and went ahead. The son fulfills his mother's wish. He carries Amuthan on a palanquin and goes on the elephant. Soon the coronation takes place. Shouldn't there be a procession on a decorated elephant? He's rehearsing for it right now said Prime Minister Anuradhar. 